SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. In your headlines tonight, man of the people. President Gotabe Rajapaksa says he works for the people and not the NGOs, while Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa guarantees that the president is committed to fulfilling every promise. Democracy will prevail. Armed forces will deploy only if police are unable to contain a situation. Defence Secretary assures no military government on the horizon. Interim Chair MP Vasudeva Nanayakara says he is ready for a three-month experience as Speaker, but nothing more. Around the clock, private sanitation companies ordered to maintain 24-hour Colombo City cleanup while island-wide police environmental protection patrols launched. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine, this Sunday, the 24th of November, 2019. Pacey Nicking Cut Winner, Anti Jerm Mouthwash Summering and a Close Up Gel Lekker Story Eka Start Karana. Hi. Hi. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and a warm welcome. This is First at Nine on Other Therana 24. Well, to bring you the top story tonight, President Gotabe Rajapaksa emphasizes that he is committed to fulfilling the obligations conferred on him by the people. Speaking to Buddhist clergy at the Bellam Villa Raja Mahavihara temple today, the head of state also said that this decision can in no way be influenced by the views of non-governmental organizations. President Gotabe Rajapaksa also visited the Sri Dharma Vijayaloka temple in Kottava today. President Gotabe Rajapaksa called on the chief incumbent of Kote Sri Kalyani Samagri Dharma Mahasanga Sabha, Venerable Dr. Ittai Pane Dhammalankara Thera today at the Sri Dharma Vijayaloka Temple in Kottava. Pogutuma Yanadi Bhai Tanatura to Patuna Kila Kishivina Sakpila Anayatu. That is the truth. I would like to say that 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 I would like ओबतुमा मेरा टे जनादिपति तुमा है टी टी हितान न टोने मैं सिल दिना म मगे जनता व मगे दरु किया अब ये तनों आ मैं उतरु नेगिने हीरा ये आया याम किसी वैरदी माते की इन्नो आ किया ला मैं चंद प्रतिपाले आनु आप इटे बैठो हूँ ना ओबतुमा ये नैतिकरण न टोने गारुतर महासंग्रात्ने है टी टापी उदाउ अपित संबंध विंड कहमती जनता वट आवृत करवाने मेरा टे जातिवाद या उपतमातुल नहीं किया याम किसी के निकट पुलवाना हम दिन आगे में वैदगन ने एक तमाय दक्षपाल के आगे वाग किया। The head of state then called on the chief incumbent of the Bellang Villa Raja Mahavihara Temple, Venerable Dr. Bellang Villa Dhammaratana Thera. Jinima, 
Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa assures that newly appointed President Gotabe Rajapaksa is committed to fulfilling his promises to the public. The Premier expressed these views when he called on the chief incumbent of the Rajo Pavanarama Temple in Gatame today. Prime Minister Rajapaksa also engaged in religious observances at the temple of the sacred tooth relic earlier in the day. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa engaged in religious observances at Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy this morning. <laughs> Prime Minister Rajapaksa later called on the chief prelate of the Ramanya sect most venerable Agga Mahapandita Napane Pema Siritera at the Vidya Sagara Monastery in Hurikadua in Manikhinna. <laughs> Prime Minister Rajapaksa then called on the Buddhist clergy at the Rajapavanarama temple in Gatambe. Sampai <laughs> 
දරුවාගේ ආස්තිය ප්‍රතිශක්ති කරන පද්ධතිය සහ මානසික ක්‍රියා නිසි පරිදි පවත්වාගෙන යාමට දායක වන කැල්සියම් විටමින් C සහ යකඩ අඩංගු මයිලෝ සමගින් පෝෂණයෙන් ඉදිරියට Defence Secretary Major General Kamal Gunaratne offered assurances aimed at putting to rest speculation that a military government will be established in the country addressing the media in Mehintale yesterday the defence secretary insisted that the rule of democracy will prevail under the new interim government Newly appointed Defence Secretary Major General Kamal Gunaratne called on the chief incumbent of the Mehintale Raja Mahavihara Temple Venerable Valava Hangunavave Dhammaratna Thera yesterday. පොලිසියට බාර දීලා තියෙනවා රටේ නීති ආහ සාමාගේ ආරක්ෂා කරලා රටේ ජනතාවට සාමයෙන් සතුටින් ජීවත් වෙන්න පුළුවන් පරිසරයක් ඇති කරලා දෙන්න පොලිසියට උපදෙස් දීලා තියෙනවා. එතකොට යම් කිසි කලබල තත්ත්වයක් ඇති වෙලා පොලිසියට ඒක පාලනය කරන්න බැරි නම් එතකොට ඒකට යොදනවා අපි පොලිසියේ විශේෂ පුහුණුවක් ලැබලා තියෙන විශේෂ කාර්ය බාලකයි නිලධාරී. විශේෂයෙන් සඳහන් කරන්න ඕනේ රටේ පාලනය කරන්න බැරි තත්ත්වයක් ඇති වුණොත් ඒ අවස්ථාවකදී පමණයි ආරක්ෂක හමුදා යොදවන්නේ. ඉතින් ඒක නිසා මේ ගැන කිසිම කලබලයක් විය යුතු දෙයක් නැහැ. කවුරු කිව්වත් හමුදා පාලනයක් ගේනවා ප්‍රජාතන්ත්‍රවාදය නැති වෙනවා කියලා මම ආරක්ෂක ලේකම් විදියට සාහිතික කරලා කියන එහෙම කිසිම තත්ත්වයක් නැහැ. අපි මේක ප්‍රජාතන්ත්‍රවාදී රටක් විදියට ඉදිරියට ගෙනියනවා. රණවිරු දඩයමට රණවිරු සෑහෙන සංඛ්‍යාවක් ගොදුරු වුණා. අපි ගෝඨාභය මහා රාජපක්ෂ ජනාධිපතිතුමාගේ ප්‍රධානත්වයෙන් තියෙන මේ රජය මගින් අපි බලනවා එහෙම අසාධාරණ ලෙස සිරගත වෙච්ච එහෙම නැත්නම් අසාධාරණ ලෙස රිමාන්ඩ් බාරයට පත් වෙලා ඉන්න ඒ රණවිරුවන්ට සාධාරණේ ඔප්පු කරන්න. The officer in charge of the CID's organized crime investigation unit Inspector of Police Nishant Silva has fled the country along with his family it is reported Silva was involved in investigations into several controversial cases at the criminal investigations department Police media spokesperson SSP Ruan Gunasekhar said that the move was made without proper leave approval The officer in charge of CID's organized crimes investigation unit Nishant Silva has fled to Switzerland along with his family. According to our airport correspondent the CID chief had boarded Edelweiss air flight number WK65 operating from Colombo to Zurich around 12:50 this afternoon. When queried by other there in a police media spokesperson SSP Ruan Gunasekhar said that de silva has not been granted leave to fly overseas and hence he can be considered to have fled the country without permission inspector of police nishant de silva investigated several incidents including the abduction and disappearance of 11 youths assassination of journalist lasanta vikramatunga and the abduction and assault of journalist keith noa In November 2018 Nishant De Silva was transferred from the CID to the Nigambo division but was restored in his former position just 2 days later following an appeal filed by him testifying before the parliamentary select committee that probed the Easter terror attacks the secretary to the police commission revealed that chief of defense staff admiral Ravindra Vijay Gunaratne had accused De Silva of being involved with the LTTE He also added that Nishant De Silva was transferred based on those accusations following an investigation conducted by the Inspector General of Police. The CID DIG R B Senaviratna however has informed the IGP in writing that he denied the allegations leveled against De Silva. It therefore led to the cancellation of his transfer. UPFA parliamentarian Vasudeva Nanayakkara has expressed interest in the position of the parliamentary speaker if he is called upon but only for the 3 month duration of the interim government. Vasudeva Nanayakkara expressed these views at a media briefing held in Colombo today. ඔබතුමාගේ නම යෝජනා වෙලා තියෙනවා කියලා දැනගන්න තියෙනවා කතානායක ධුරය සහ ඔබතුමා ඒ කෙනත් කොහොමද මම මූලික වශයෙන් කැමති දේශපාලන චරිතයක් හැටියට මගේ කටයුතු කරගෙන යන්නයි ඉදිරියට. නමුත් මට බාර කරනවා නම් කෙටි කාලයකට මම ලෑස්ටි ඒ වගේම බාර ගන්න. ඒක මම අගය කිරීමකුත් කරනවා. ඒ සඳහා මාව තෝරා ගත්තා. ඉදිරිය අවුරුදු 5 සඳහා ඉදිරියට කොහොමද ඒකට වෙන කතානායක කෙනෙක් හොයා ගන්න වෙනවා අපිට. මම ලෑස්ටි නැහැ. ඉදිරි කාලේ කතානායක ධුරයම ඉන්න. ओनेट्टी 
කෙලින් අපිට අවිත් කිව්වේ නෑ ඔබ කතා නායක වන්න කියලා එහෙම කියවුනේ නෑ ඔබතුමා මොනවා වුණත් කතා නායක ඉතුරේ මේ මාස තුන කාලේ සඳහා කැමති බාර ගන්න කැමති ඒකත් හොඳ අද්දැකීමක් නේ කතා නායක එක්කලා හැමදාම ගැටෙමින් ඉඳලා ඊළඟට කතා නායකගේ කටයුතු ඊටමත්ම අපහසු තත්වයට පත් කළා දීර්ඝ කාලයක් ඊළඟට ඒ දූරයට පත් වෙලා ඒ අමාරුකම් ඔක්කොම විඳින්නට ලැබෙන අද්දැකීමක් වටිනා දෙයක් මම ඉන්න වඩාත්ම the sri lanka police department has been directed to be at the forefront of ensuring environmental protection throughout the island in this backdrop the police environmental division and its individual units are to be reorganized and placed in charge of investigating and bringing to justice perpetrators causing damages to the country's environment The Sri Lanka police launched a special environmental program today that will see police personnel overseeing the environmental well-being of specific areas under their purview. Each police officer will be allocated a specific area where they will investigate activities that cause harm to the environment and educate the public on actions harmful to the environment. Police spokesman SSP Ruan Gunasekara said that a similar program will also be implemented soon with the aim of reducing road accidents. පරිසරය සුරැකීමේ දැවැන්ත මෙහෙයුමක් ශ්‍රී ලංකා පොලීසිය නැවතත් ආරම්භ කළා. අපි මුලින්ම ශ්‍රී ලංකා පොලීසියේ තිබෙන පාරිසරික දිසාවත් ඒ වගේම පාරිසරික කොට්ටාසයත් ප්‍රති සංවිධානය කිරීම ආරම්භ කළා. ඒ අනුව පාරිසරික දිසාව බාරව නව නියෝජ්‍ය පොලිස්පතිවරයෙකුත්, පාරිසරික කොට්ටාසය බාරව නව අධ්‍යක්ෂවරයෙකුත් පත් කිරීමට කටයුතු කළා. දිවේනේ තිබෙන සෑම පොලිස් ස්ථානයකම ස්ථාපිත කර තිබුණු පොලිස් පාරිසරික ඒකක නැවත ප්‍රති සංවිධානය කිරීම ආරම්භ කරනු ලැබුවා. සෑම මාර්ගයකම පාරිසරික කොට්ටාශයේ සහ පාරිසරික ඒකකවල නිලධාරීන් මින් ඉදිරියට අපි යොදවනු ලබනවා. කොළඹ පමණක් නෙවෙයි මේ ක්‍රියාවලිය දිවයිනේ සෑම ප්‍රදේශයකටම ව්‍යාප්ත කරන බවත් සඳහන් කරන්න අවශ්‍යයි. පාරිසරික නිලධාරීන් පොලිස් නිලධාරීන් මාර්ගවල ගමන් කරමින් පරිසරයට හානිදායක වන ක්‍රියාවන් හානිදායක වූ අවස්ථාවන් ඒ වගේම පරිසර හානියන් සිදු වන ස්ථානයන් පිළිබඳව නිරීක්ෂණය කරනවා පළාත් පාලන ආයතන සම්බන්ධීකරණය සිදු කරලා ඒ පරිසර හානිය එයින් ඉවත් කිරීම සඳහා අවශ්‍ය උපරිම ක්‍රියාමාර්ග මේ නිලධාරීන් ගනු ලබනවා ඊටත් අමතරව මේ නිලධාරීන් පවිත්‍රතාවන් සිදු කරන ඒ අදාළ ආයතන ඒවා නිසි පරිදි සිදු කරනවාද කියන එකත් අධීක්ෂණය කරමින් ඔවුන්ට අවශ්‍ය උපදෙස් ලබා දීමත් සිදු කරනු ලබනවා. ඒ වගේම මහ ජනතාව දැනුවත් කිරීමේ ක්‍රියාවලියකත් යෙදෙනවා මේ නිලධාරීන්. ඒ වගේම කොළඹ නගරයේ පවිත්‍රතා සේවාව සිදු කරන ආයතන දෙකක් තිබෙනවා. ඒ ආයතන දෙකෙහිම කලමනාකරුවන් පෙරේදා දින පාරිසරික කොට්ටාසය වෙත ගෙන්වනු ලැබුවා. අවශ්‍ය උපදෙස් සියල්ල ඔවුන්ට ලබා දුන්නා විශේෂයෙන් මේ අතර ඔවුන්ට ලබා දුන්න උපදෙසක් තමයි ඔවුන්ගේ පවිත්‍රතා සේවාව දෛනිකව අලුයම 5 30 වන විට ආරම්භ කිරීම අවශ්‍ය වන බව ඔවුන්ට දැනුම් දුන්නා. ඒ වගේම ඔවුන්ගේ සේවකයින් යොදවලා ඇය 24 පුරාවටම ඒ පවිත්‍රතාව ආරක්ෂා කරගත යුතු බවටත් ඔවුන්ට අවශ්‍ය උපදෙස් ලබා දුන්නා. The human elephant conflict leaves the people as well as these jumbos in distress. We'll bring you the details after the short break. A man succumbed to his injuries after being attacked by a wild elephant in the area of Budurwaya in Bakamuna, Alahara. The incident occurred during attempts to chase away an elephant who had entered the village. Area residents have complained of the threats they face from wild elephants due to the lack of a permanent solution from authorities. The man who succumbed to his injuries after being attacked by a wild elephant was a 43-year-old father of two. He lost his life during attempts to chase away the elephant who entered the village. Although wild elephants encroaching on human habitats is not a surprise, the residents of Budruwayaya have been facing severe difficulties due to human elephant conflict. The residents point to the malfunctioning of the electric fence in the Vasgamur reserve as the reason behind the increased frequency of elephant encroachment. 
Villagers complain that wildlife officials have not taken action despite being informed of the situation. Meanwhile, 15 villagers in the Dambulla electorate of the Mathale district are also facing a grave threat due to wild elephants. Villagers were seen ransacked by wild elephants causing damage to paddy fields, crops and houses in the Galevela area. The newly appointed Minister of Wildlife, SM Chandra Sena, had this to say when questioned about the increasingly deadly human elephant conflict. Welcome back. Taking you to business news, Saudi Arabian oil giant Saudi Aramco met investors in Dubai today to market the company's initial public offering. The meeting comes in the backdrop of the company trying to secure demand from Kuwait's sovereign wealth fund. From, for the deal worth up to 25.6 billion US dollars, which relies heavily on local and regional buyers. Top Aramco executives, including Aramco's chief executive Amin Nazar, met officials from Kuwait's Sovereign Wealth Fund weeks ago, a source familiar with the matter said. Aramco has struggled to attract a major a cornerstone or anchor investor for its IPO, which could potentially be the world's biggest. Some investors have questioned Aramco's about the sustainability of its dividend policy. Aramco has set a base dividend of 75 billion US dollars for five years. It plans to sell 1.5% of the company, with the deal being the centerpiece of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's plans to diversify the Saudi economy away from its reliance on oil. And here in Sri Lanka, the stock market activity in bond markets especially are expected to be slow ahead of key monetary policy announcements this Friday by the country's new interim government. We now have Dimantha Matthew from First Capital with a brief report on how markets are expected to perform in the coming week. In the bond market, we expect activity to slow down drastically with the monetary policy announcement due on Friday. The yield curve is likely to broadly remain stagnant as well until the policy announcement is given. In the equity market, of course, we expect uh, mixed reactions. Investors may adopt a selective buying mode as uh, most investors look to restructure their portfolios in order to add more value-adding counters. With consumer demand starting to slowly gather momentum, we expect investors to move into consumer counters. In addition, with the significant uh, undervaluation of the ban banking counters, we expect investors to show interest in uh, banking stocks as well in the coming weeks. And we'll bring you the very latest from around the world and in sports after this short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back in your sports news. Australia cruised to victory in the first test against Pakistan at the Gabba, sealing the win by an innings and five runs after tea on the fourth day with Josh Hazelwood leading the way with four for 63. Bazaar Azam gave Pakistan something to smile about with a flowing 114, responding to a poor first innings dismissal in the best way possible. Joining him was a wicketkeeper Mohammad Rizwan, who fell agonizingly short of a deserved century of his own, holding out for 95. Manus Lambouchain was awarded the man of the match for his 185 run innings. Australia now has a 1-0 lead in the two-match series with the record uh, second test beginning in Adelaide on Friday.
And that wraps up tonight's edition of First at Nine on Other Dharana 24. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.